Every human being seeks balance and well-being in their lives. Everyone wants a life free of stress and illness with inner peace and contentment. Some say it's an unattainable goal, as fleeting as water, as intangible as air itself. But there are places where the goal is closer, where nature breathes and the senses are restored, often by the power of a human touch. And there are people who, in the midst of their journey, and by the light of their genius, illuminate the path. Life's a Journey proudly brought to you by Redox and covers the secrets of health and well-being. Over 13 weeks, we'll explore the many drivers of health, from nutrition and exercise to attitude and approach to life. In season one, we learn that the mind and body are interlinked, that having physical health means beating stress, staying motivated and finding balance in our lives. With the help of experts in their fields, Life's a Journey examines the link between our attitudes and our ailments, exploring the emotional basis of health, challenging us to discard our negative habits and adopt positive ones. Meet our first transformational expert, the magical Dr. Tony Luck. So I'm more valuable because I have a $4 million Bentley and I'm more valuable because I've lived in a 20 million rand house and, and the person who lives in a lesser house, they're less valuable. But we did that as a society, as a world. And so the, when people have less, they, they value things more. They value their family more. They value time more. You know, busy rich people spend 10 minutes a day with their kids. They outsource their kids to the nanny, you know, to the mother with the milk. I mean, everything's outsourced. Negativity does illuminate an area of your life that you're dissatisfied with, and that's where it's useful, it's a useful signal, but you want to move out of that. So what do we do? And there's two practical questions you need to ask yourself. Your first question is, what is good about this? I know that might seem crazy, but for every loss there's a gain. How can this make you better instead of bitter? Uh, what can you learn from it? We only really learn when things don't work out. And then your second key question, and there is magic in this question, what can I do about it? Get solution focused. I had problems with my health, and that's when I found out I was pregnant with my youngest daughter, and I had to come off everything. So I tried to find a natural way to correct the chemical imbalance, and so it was, it was this journey. I really distilled it down to a simple line with a lot of people because they're like, tell me in one sentence what I should be doing. I said, well, I acknowledge that I, I've been designed by a creator and we were putting natural God-made foods into our God-made bodies, it'll result in God-made health. That's it. It's that simple. It's not complicated. At the end of your life, you're going to be asked a simple question. Did you do everything you could with everything you were given? And you want to be able to say, absolutely, I lived an amazing life. And any area of your life that you don't empower, somebody else is going to overpower you. And so nobody really wants to be overpowered. They want to be able to shine their power. So when we give ourselves permission to do it, other people are drawn to us. Like uh, you might say, all plants and animals grow to the light of the sun. So anybody who's shining, anybody else is you know, drawn to them and grows towards them to try to, to exemplify that same thing. So we give permi permission to other people the second we begin to shine. This is our nature. And through the testimony of ordinary people, we are witness to the sometimes painful lessons that life teaches us. We show you how they have found the strength to overcome hardship. You know, people make mistakes. We are all work in progress. I'm not striving for perfection. My goal in life is to progress as a human being. And I also have issues with this whole pursuit of happiness thing. You know, it, we all seem to be in the pursuit of happiness when happiness actually is right within our grasp. It's a decision that we make in life. And it's not about what you have in life, it's about what you are. That's my motto. The most important thing is to be yourself. Know who you are. I mean, you can't really be with anybody unless you know and you're happy and comfortable in your own skin then after that you can figure out how you fit in with everybody else. So my advice is to just, you know, be yourself. That's the most important thing. I just
just could not get out of bed to go to work in the morning. And I would fight with myself and I would say, you have to do this. And one day I just quit and I called my boss and I said, you've been amazing, I just can't do this anymore. I moved in with a friend, I slept on her couch, crying myself to sleep every night until she got sick of me and said, read this book. And it was a book called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. And this book taught me a very important thing, the power of conscious choice, because it says it doesn't matter what's happening around you, where you come from, what your circumstances are, what your emotions are, you can choose. Do you know, I believe that if you put enemies around a table and give them a nice place of food, they can't fight, they must talk. Reconciliation starts around the dining room table. Come alone, what makes you happy? This is it, that you know you've got one shot at really making an impact in your child's life in this generation. You can have all the money that you get, but one day when you die, you don't have a fenter trailer following your casket with your money. What you leave is a legacy, what you leave is a memory. Our presenters Zareda Jardine and Steven Siegel are no strangers to the journey of personal transformation. In the aftermath of losing her mother, Zareda gave birth for the first time to Zaria. And to become Mr. South Africa, Steven had to overcome low self-esteem, depression and obesity. Losing my mom while I was pregnant was a weird dichotomy in that I had this immense joy of being pregnant and at the same time that I found out that I was pregnant, my mom had suffered a severe stroke. Through that, I had to find a way to be accepting of what was and the incredible thing about my daughter is that I see my mom in her every single day, so it's, it's a good thing. A couple of years ago, I went through a bad patch where I lost a couple of businesses and during that time I became a comfort eater and I went to parks and I'd sit there, like you see in the movies, the guys would sit there in the park and pretend to go to work because they just didn't want to be at home because how do you tell your wife, how do you tell your friends that you don't have a job? And I thought to myself, what am I doing? Why did I let myself go like this? And while sitting there, I came across a previous Mr. South Africa's blog and how he was a really nice guy and he had won this title. And I thought, let me, go, let me give it a go, why not? What have I got to lose? I started out going to the gym and not losing weight and then I realized, you know what? It's not about body and eating, it's about your, your mindset. And I went for it and 27 kilos later, with every kilo that I lost, I became more confident, more excited about life and I won the Mr. South Africa title and now I'm living my dream, presenting a show that's gonna change people's lives. Whether at work or play, whether we are parents or children, our thoughts affect our feelings and our lives. We create our reality every day, repeating the good or bad habits we've picked up on our journeys. Life's a Journey aims to be a life lesson, a weekly dose of wisdom to help make sense of our frenetic lives. From physical health to financial fitness, from inspiration to motivation in our relationships and in ourselves, no one should have to find the answers alone. Happiness loves company, so take our hands and join us on that journey.